Well, praise the Lord. This is Mark Irvin. So glad to be with you again. Bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you again for another wonderful time that we can be together to learn your word, to enjoy your word. And I thank you, Father, that you're giving us revelation, that we're learning from you, and that our lives are changing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're teaching this week a series called Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Fight the Good Fight of Faith. And our text is taken from 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter. 1 Timothy, the 6th chapter, where in verse 12, where it says that we are to fight the good fight of faith, that we're to lay hold on eternal life. Fight the good fight of of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Now in the spirit, you got all the victory. Everything is there. The devil's been defeated. In your soul, you're in the process of getting your mind renewed with the word of God. And the only battle that you have in your life is to get rid of the doubt. To get rid of the doubt. To no longer believe lies. Lies to no longer believe things that are contrary to the Word of God, contrary to the will of God. And this is where the battle is. You know, you get it settled. The devil's defeated. You get it settled. He has no place in my life. You get it settled. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. You get it settled. By his stripes, I'm healed. You get these things settled. And anything that is in your life, when you, when you look at the Word of God... And you see, wow, this is who I am and this is what belongs to me. And if there's something different going on in your soul, something different going on in your body, then it's important for you to build yourself up on that area. Bring the Word of God into your soul. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And what happens? Literally, God's Word with faith will knock the doubt out. You no longer believe those lies. Those things are contrary to the Word. You believe the Word. And as you do, what Jesus has bought and paid for becomes a reality. You start prospering in what you put your hand to. You go forth and you're a light. You're a blessing. And people's lives are changed through you because no longer do you have those fears that want to hold you back. Fighting the good fight of faith is simply replacing all those doubts that are in your soul, in your heart, in your mind not talking about your spirit. In your spirit, you have the faith of God on the inside of you. And so that faith of God on the inside of you is always there to knock the doubt out. And it's activated through the Word of God that comes. And so the Word says to lay hold. This is what it means. This is how you lay hold. Walk in what God has provided for you. Walk in the blessing that He's already blessed you with. Now notice... In 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and verse 4. That's 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and verse 4. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Hallelujah. They're mighty. You don't get rid of this stuff in through the natural. You get rid of this with the power of God that's in you in the spirit. There's a way to remove these fears from your soul. There's a way. The weapons are mighty. You fight. It's a good fight of faith. Why is it called a good fight of faith? Because faith is always greater than fear. And faith will knock fear out. It'll knock it out of your soul. It'll knock all these barriers out of your life, all these walls out of your life that keep you from going forward and, and for, from that keep the plan of God from coming to pass in your life. You know, when, when I was pastoring, I went into the prison uh, for eight years of my life and I ministered. I went into some very, uh, you know, I, I went into to places where people had committed some very serious crimes and maximum security. And one time I remember walking in to one of the prisons and, and, you know, I just thought, man, how many doors do you go through to get into the place where we went in to minister to these people? And you walk through one door and when you walk through that door, it shuts behind you and it locks. 
and it locks and then the next door opens up and you go through that one and then that one locks and then the next one and by the time we finally got all the way into the middle where we'd have would have the church service in this maximum security prison uh, I, I remember counting eight doors like that and in the beginning you know I, there, there was a little bit of fear there and because you know because of that of knowing man we're, we're going into this place and these people have committed serious crimes and and uh, if anything were ever to happen, there's eight doors <laughs> that you got to go through. And, and they gave us these things, you know, these radios that we had to take in with us. And, of course, I mean, it was well secured. You understand there's police there and cameras there and all of that. But still, I mean, you're, you're, you're with people that have done some, some really bad things. And, but you know what? God loves those people. And see, this is the key. This is the key. Perfect love. 1 John 4, verse 7 says, Perfect love casts out all fear. And when the love of God for the people grows bigger than what they've done, it'll knock that fear out. And that's what happened. And I just started getting such a love of God for those people in that maximum security prison. I mean, and they had done some very, very bad things. But you know what? When you come to Christ, you become a new creation. And old things have passed away and all things become new. You become a brand new person. That's what happened in Paul. Paul, I mean, if anybody did some bad things, Paul did. He's the one that started all the persecution that's even in the world today against the Christians. And he was simply a man that was controlled by a religious spirit. He had a religious spirit on the inside of him. And so your battle is going to be to face people that have the devil on the inside of them. To go against you. To do things against you. Your battle is going to be where there are thoughts that, that come into your life that are contrary to God's will to get you to question the integrity of God and His Word. This is where the battle is. But notice what it says. Here's how we deal with it. So we got a stronghold. So, you know, in the prison, that was an issue. And, but but uh, as the love of God grew, I was able to confront that. And then for eight years... Every month, go into three different prisons. God protected me, protected me, protected me. And we had many, many people saved in the prison. Many people healed. Their lives changed. So thankful for what God did in those places. And it was the love of God that, that brought forth the faith of God to knock that out, that I could do that part of my life. And, and, you know, I, I mean, in, in my life, everything that God has asked me to do, there's always been, in the beginning, this little insecurity, this little inferiority. But as I build myself on the Word and as I allow the love of God to, to work in my heart toward where I'm going and what I'm doing, it'll always knock this stuff out every single time, every single time to where that hold, that thing that's trying to hold me back, comes down. I've got some things right now that are building on the inside of me and I'm just letting things build and letting things build and and so, and there'll be a day I'm going to take the step. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what God tells me to do in that area and I know that there's going to be some great fruit that comes and I can't talk about it right now but I can tell you it's growing big on the inside. Praise God. First time I flew on an airplane to go to another nation. <laughs> was to go to France in 1994 and preach a tent revival. I'd never been out of the United States internationally. And, uh, but God said, go. And, and there were some things, you know, that, 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 that happened. And, uh, and I, I mean, it, it looked like, wow, how are you going to get out of this situation? Nobody speaks this language, this language. But you know what? In, in, in the situation that I was in, I found the right people at the right time. I had divine appointments, and, and God worked the whole situation out. And, you know, that first trip was such a great trip for me because I can, it was a fear that was in my life. Remember, God told me when I was a teenager that I would be going to other nations. Well, then came the first step, the first trip, but there were different things that came up on that trip. But, you know, every situation, confront it, confront it, confront it. The love of God grew. We had many people give their life to Jesus, many people healed. God confirmed that trip in a powerful, powerful way. And from that point on, 
that fear has been confronted. And I can go forward. I can get on airplanes. I can go to other nations. I know that God's going to show up every time that I go the places that he tells me to go. Amen. All right. Now look at this. It says, casting down imaginations, pulling down strongholds. This is the fight of faith. To, to pull down strongholds, to cast down imaginations. Well, what would that be? To cast down imaginations would be to replace the wrong imaginations with the right imaginations. Oh, people say, well, you know, you shouldn't imagine this and you shouldn't imagine that. Meditations of the devil and all that kind of stuff. No, the devil took meditation and imagination and perverted it. He does that with all the principles of God. He, he doesn't even come up with his own ideas. He just takes what's, what's godly principles and perverts it. And that's what meditation and esoteric and new age and all that kind of stuff is. It's nothing but a perversion of what is real. It's a counterfeit. It's a copy of what's real. We got the real. You have a mind. And your mind is the be, to be the place where you're to have the pictures of God on the inside. And the Word of God will put the right pictures in you. And so it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought. Notice, every thought. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Well, tomorrow we're going to continue on with this message. And it'll be a powerful message as we continue on to talk about the good fight of faith. Father, I just thank you for this wonderful opportunity that we've had to be together again to learn about this good fight. We are winners. Greater are you that's in us than the little devil that's in this world. And I thank you, Father, and I know so many people are being helped through these messages. And these messages are changing their lives as, con as fear is being confronted in their life. Lord, you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And I thank you, Father, that with your word we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow as we bring you another message of faith, hope, and love. This is